let's jump okay. in. A very warm welcome to everyone. It's good to see familiar faces. Um, we've got about 15, 15 participants, so everyone will join us. So we have a great show today of hearing from um, Kwame Antwi. Did I pronounce the last name right? Antwi. Yes. Uh, it's okay, Antwi, Aunt, but uh, they do say Antwi, oh. but it's okay, don't worry. <laughs> Close you can't enough. pronounce it unless you're from Ghana. <laughs> I will learn. I will learn. So we have he's a um, co-founder of uh, Just Flex, Flex Creative, um, as well as a brand strategist. I'm really excited for this event because he's, I've been, I follow him on a lot of social media, so like Instagram and everything, and like across the board, like Lens of Kwame and um, Just Flex Creative have been doing a lot. Um, in terms of their brand, so I'm really, really excited for this. So thank you so much, and uh, take it away. Oh, sorry, just some house rules. Sorry. Um, if you have any questions throughout the seminar, um, just put it in the chat box. Um, so Kwame will have access to that and can answer the questions like throughout the presentation. Um, so yeah, any questions? We don't forget. We will have a Q and A session at towards um towards the end, like a Q and A. But throughout, if you have any questions, just put it in the chat and then come below. Yeah. Over to you. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. I think uh, about 36 people registered, but we do have 19 people. So, how we wait for them all to be start? Um, let's see. So, we posted in the group that we are live. So, uh, uh, usually, what we do is uh, we do start um, because we are recording the event. So eventually, people who lost the beginning uh, are always uh, able to uh, catch up later, and it will also reach a wider audience because sometimes people uh, maybe they didn't have time to attend this one, but they are still interested in. So later on, they can also watch it. Um, and uh, during your presentation, uh, many other will jump in. So uh, let's just get started. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's better to keep up on the time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And Okay, so before we start, can we just tell our location and why we joined today's webinar through the chat box? So if you can kindly send your location and why you joined today's webinar. Okay, so we've got, uh, I think I can't pronounce the names, but we've got someone from... Uh, Hunan, Changsha, okay, Dakar. Uh, Abigo, I, I don't get your question. Please, there is, could it be word or phone? Uh, quickly, I would like to know how to get on screen. Phone messing up, okay. Okay. Okay, now, okay, so we've got Shanghai, we've got Shanghai, Shanghai is taking the lead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shanghai is taking the lead. Okay. And, uh, because webinars, okay, want to learn to stand out. Okay, great, that is good. Find the topic fascination, very important. Okay, I think we are all at the right place. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Taranga Valley for giving me such opportunity to share the little that I know. They are doing a great job out there. I love how they put up this webinar, and it's very informative. By the way, please, if my voice is down, you can please let me know through the chat. If you can hear me and you can also see my screen, can you let me know through the chat? Okay, great. Okay, so as Kizu said, uh, I'm Kwame, Kwame Entry with Deflex Creatives. Uh, I'm a brand strategist and a business coach with Deflex Creatives. We are just uh, a small branding and web design agency based here in Wuhan. And uh, I've got three teammates, Nana, Sway, and Dada. 
And basically what we do is we offer brand strategy, web design, logo design, and digital marketing services for small businesses so as they can grow and succeed digitally. And today's uh, topic is differentiating your business in the crowded market space. Actually, before I start, I would like to say that this is actually my first webinar with such a large number. Due to the nature of what I do, I normally work with a smaller group of people because branding tends to be more practical. But uh, nevertheless, I'll try to do, offer my best today. So please permit me if you don't get some of the things that I say. But we, we are going to have a QA and a session whereby we can answer your specific questions based on your specific businesses. OK, so uh, before I start, let me give this disclaimer. Obviously, there are more ways to differentiate your business in a crowded marketplace. Whatever I'm going to teach today is not the only way to do it. So whatever we are going to learn today, if you apply it to your business and it doesn't work with your business, feel free to change it because not all businesses are the same. However, I believe that whatever we share today is, is more insightful because uh, I believe rules enable one to follow, but knowledge enables one to read. So take whatever we learn today as just a knowledge, but no rules that you are supposed to follow as a checklist or Kwame said, I'm supposed to do A, B, C, D in order to stand out in the marketplace. However, take it as knowledge and insight so as you can make your own educative decisions. Okay, so uh, uh, how many of us have their own businesses or are planning to start their own businesses? If you've got your own businesses, can you just send a yes in the chat box if you've got your own business? Okay, Maria has got his own business. Yes, yes. Okay, we've got five years. Okay. And me. Okay, okay. So I believe then we are at the right place. Okay, so how many of us do believe they've got their own brand? If you've got a brand, can you please send a yes in the chat box if, if you've got your own brand? Okay, if he has got his own brand, Charles has got his own brand. Wow. Okay. Kiza has got her own brand. Okay, what about Maria? I, don't you have your brand yet? Dr. Rice has got, yes, my brand is me. Oh, okay, <laughs> that is good, okay, your brand is you. That is great. So today's agenda is, first of all, we are going to find out that, we are going to find out whether it's important to differentiate our businesses. Why don't we just run our normal businesses and just be, be there? Why, should, why, is, why is there a need for us to differentiate our businesses? And two, if we do decide that there's a need for us to differentiate our businesses, we'll go through the process of differentiating our businesses. And finally, after we've gone through the process of differentiating our businesses, we will we'll go to a, a plan of action. What are we supposed to do next now that we know how to differentiate our businesses? Then uh, we are going to have Q and A's whereby we can answer specific questions based on your business, your various businesses. And uh, finally, if we still got time, we can do networking and get to know each other. So uh, there's a fight for attention in the world that we are living in. The chances of uh, the entry level for you to start your business is becoming easier day in and day out, which is a good thing. So now everybody can start a business or start building their own brand without the need of any huge capital out there. However, there's a downside also to that situation, which means that uh, no matter what businesses that you run, no, no matter the services you offer or the, the products that you do sell, there are chances that there are about like 100 of businesses offering the same product or services to the type of audience that you are trying to serve. So you can't avoid competition, obviously, because whatever you do, there are hundreds of businesses trying to do the same thing, and which has become very difficult for us and it has led us into the world whereby each and every day we are all fighting for attention because and also these days people's attention span is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller now these days people are getting numb to advertisement now when we do see ads we don't we, we don't even read them any longer because we are numb to these things we are tired of every day being bombarded with information and a whole lot of uh of offers out there that was even proud to this corona situation 
And now that we are living in this corona situation, that uh, the, now people have enough time on their hands, and which means that the offers or the options are becoming huge because now people have enough time and people are putting out content, people are putting out videos, people are fighting for attention day in and day out. And uh, Mars did a research prior to the corona situation and uh, they found out that 50% of articles published have no likes, shares, comments, and probably no views, which means that these days, people even buy likes on their social media posts because people don't care about what you do. They are, they are tired of everyday people putting out content. So to, in order to even get likes, people do what? Buy them on social media. And uh, how do we combat such a situation? There are two options to go about this situation. A situation whereby people are fighting for attention and we still want to stand out as a business. There are two options to go about it. The first option is we can push more content and more noise out there so as we can outbeat our competition. But that is not a viable option because social media won't save your brand if you've got nothing to offer with it. Just like the Instagram celebrity who, uh, who uh, she had uh, about over 2 million followers, yet when she launched her clothing line, she couldn't even get about uh, 36 people to purchase her product. Of course, she had the following, but no one was interested in her business. And the other option of, that, uh, the other part that we can go through to stand out and uh, be our competitors, uh, our, our target audience first choice is to build a brand. And I believe we've all had this, or you need to build a brand in order to uh, be successful. You need to build a brand in order to stand out in your marketplace. But the problem is not that we don't know that we are supposed to build a brand. The problem is most of us don't know how to go about it in terms of building the brand that we want to have. It's easier said than that. Oh, build a brand, build a brand. Gary Vee, everyone is saying build a brand. But how do you go about building a brand? I would like us to tackle it from the roots. The main problem is majority of us don't know what a brand is in the first place to even begin by building it. When we think of, or when we are being told we need to build a brand, what comes into our mind is, oh, design, or oh, let's get a pretty logo, let's get nine social media posts, and that is, that is it, we've got a brand. But a brand is more than just having a pretty logo or, or having a nine social media post. So it, bring us, it brings us to the question of, what is a brand? Well, there are different and uh, numerous definitions for a brand. Jeff Bezos defines a brand as what people say about you when you're not in the room. Marinu Mama, one of the branding experts, also defines a brand as a person's gut feeling about your product, your services, or your business. And uh, the reason being that there isn't no definitive definition for a brand. The reason being that brand, a brand is a feeling and how you feel about something might be different from how the next person feels about the same thing. I like to simplify things, so I define a brand as the meaning or the perception that people attach to you or your business, just like a reputation. So it's just a perception which lives in the minds of your target audience. But uh, Kwame said we are supposed to build a brand, and the brand that he's talking about is a feeling, is a perception that lives in the minds of our target audience then how can we influence such a perception if it, lives, if it lives in the minds of our target audience? It's difficult to influence such a perception, for, especially for a larger group of people. So we need to be strategic. We need a strategic plan to be able to at least influence how people see us or how, people, how we want people to perceive us. And that is what we call branding. And uh, in order to differentiate our business in a crowded marketplace, we need to build a brand or we need to do branding because branding, I believe, is the act of differentiation. So branding is the act of differentiation. But don't take my word for it. Let's play a quick game to find out if truly branding can help us differentiate our businesses in the crowded marketplace. So I'm going to present two products, two brands, and we just choose from them which one that we prefer. There's no wrong or right answer. It's just based on your pe uh, personal preference. So you just send A or B in the chat box if you prefer product A or product B. So we've got two brands. We've got two brands of shampoo. So which one do you prefer, shampoo A or shampoo B? Can you just send them in the chat box? 
Okay, Maria says A. Tito says A, Isabella A. Okay, A. A. A, okay, I think A, A is having it. Okay, A, 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 okay, great. Now, what about these two products, these two coffees? Which one do you prefer, coffee A or coffee B? Okay, B, now, okay, now we are getting B, okay, B, A, okay, it's switching. A, B, okay, B, 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 okay, it seems with the coffee, the B's have it. Okay, what about these cookies, these two products, cookie A or B, which one do you prefer? B, B, A, B, okay, B, A, okay, I think with the cookie, we, we are getting equal number of A, B, C, okay, B, B, Okay, okay, great. Okay, now let's try to take out the subjectivity from it and let's make it more objective. Now with the same product, let me change the question. So with, with these two uh, shampoos, which one do you think is more expensive, A or B? A, oh, okay, A, B, okay, someone says B, okay, A, 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 Okay, the B, A, okay. What about these two coffees? Which one do you think is the strongest? Which of, which of the coffees has got the highest amount of caffeine? A or B, coffee A or B? A, A, B, A, 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 A. Okay, what about these cookies? Which one do you think is more healthy? Which one is the healthiest? B, 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 oh, okay, I think we all agree on that. Okay, so with the same product, with the first set of questions, it was, we were just being subjective. So it was just based on our personal preference. So that is how come we had the answers being A, B, A, B, 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 A. But with the second set of questions, we were being more in, uh, intentional and more objective. So with the second set of questions, I tried, influencing your decision. So if you chose uh, shampoo B for the first question, that is what you preferred. With the second set of questions, I tried changing your perception by asking, uh, by telling you that, okay, if you really want an expensive or a premium shampoo, then my shampoo is the shampoo that you're supposed to go in for, which happens to be what shampoo was A. And as we can see, majority of us agreed on that shampoo A is the most expensive, Coffee B is uh, coffee A is the most strongest, and uh, cookie B is also the healthiest. But can you please tell me in the chat box what are the difference between shampoo A and B in the chat box? What are the difference? What do you think are the differences between shampoo A and B? Packaging, okay. Who else? What are the differences between shampoo A and B? Photography, okay, great. Color and design, okay. Who else? Packaging as well, okay, great. Star, okay, that is also nice. Okay, now, background, okay, that is interesting. What about these two coffees? What are the difference between coffee A and coffee B? Colors, oh, okay, great. Color scheme, okay. B looks simple, okay, I like that. B looks simple, okay. Presentation, colors, packaging, tone, presentation, great. Looks more modern and not too much fake graphics. Oh, okay, that is also interesting. Coffee A looks more energetic. A is too busy. Wow, oh, okay. What about these two cookies? What are the difference? Classic, okay. One is more classic than the other, okay, Dr. Rice. What, else, what are the difference between the cookie A and cookie B? 
it has seven, seven uh, okay. Colors B is more minimalistic, okay, less aggressive, okay. A like too sweet, B as minimalistic. Okay, that is that is interesting. I, I love all these answers. But did you realize that shampoo A and shampoo B are actually the same product with the same logo, with the same text, just with different design? Did anybody realize that? Anyone realize that? That shampoo A and shampoo B are actually the same product, the same logo, the same brand name, the same wedding, just with different styles for a different purpose. Yes, all the products. Okay, Abigail got that from the start. Uh, yes, the logos are the same. B looks, yes. Yes, so it's the same with the coffee and the same with the cookie. Actually, they are the same products with the same logo, with the same name, with the same text. But see how when we were being asked two different questions, with the, set, the first set of questions, we made different decisions based on our uh, personal preference. And with the second set of questions, majority made the same decision. At least we, we were able to influence majority of us to choose that, okay, cookie B is the healthiest. So, so if two products having the same name, having the same logo, the same word, but with strategic branding, one can stand out from the other. How much more having a business with different names and different logo with made probably a slightly uh, different services, but in the same market space? How can you also differentiate your businesses in the current market space? If two products with the same logo, with the same name and the same word can differentiate themselves with just strategic branding, then I believe your businesses can, you can also differentiate your businesses in a crowded marketplace, no matter if all of them are selling pastries or everyone is selling hair or everyone is selling sneakers. With strategic branding, you can do the same because branding is all about being intentional. So with the second set of questions, we were being intentional. We asked, okay, which cookie do you think is the healthiest? So if you are looking for the healthiest cookie, if from the first question you even chose cookie A, with the second question, you might choose cookie B because if you are looking for the healthiest cookie, then cookie B is what is the cookie you're supposed to go in for. So now that we've all established the fact that strategic branding can help us differentiate our businesses in the crowded marketplace, then how do we go about building strategic brands or how do we build successful brands? That is our next question. That is the second part of the agenda. Well, I do believe that all strong and successful brands have four traits in common, which I do call the four pillars of branding. Unfortunately, most businesses focuses on just one out of the four pillars of branding, which is the design aspect of branding, that is brand expression, leaving all the three pillars, essential pillars of branding. All successful brands out there start with the first pillar of branding, that is brand clarity. Before they even start building their brand, they first of all, identify who they are, why they exist, and what they have to offer, that is brand clarity. They have to gain focus on what they're about to do before they even start building their brand. After they identify who they are, why they exist, and what they have to offer, they move on to the second pillar, that is what brand positioning, whereby they try to own a space in the minds of their target audience. They try to position themselves in the minds of their target audience so as if their target audience are people looking for healthy cookies, then they produce or they provide them with cookie B. If their target audience are people looking for the strongest coffee, then they provide them with what, coffee A. It's all about positioning, because no matter how good your product is, no matter how great your mirror is, if it has no use to a blind man, he or she, uh, the blind man won't buy your mirror. So it's all about positioning. Then they move on to the third or the famous pillar of branding, that is brand expression. That is the visual and verbal expression of your brand. That, is, that has got to do with your logo, your colors, your social media, your website. That is the pillar of branding that most businesses are familiar with. Then it doesn't end there. There are actually three phases of branding that a customer goes through. The first phase is what? Pre-buying. Before they buy, they go through a phase. And uh, uh, during when they buy, that is the second uh, phase. And the final phase is what we call post-branding. With that, that one also, most uh, about 33% of businesses don't focus on the post-branding uh, aspect of it. After the customer buys, they think that is the end 
of their transaction. But actually, that is the beginning of the transaction. So after the customer buys from you, that is where the relationship starts. That is where you get to know their experience going through your brand, what they experienced whilst buying your, your product. So as you try to provide a better experience for the next customer you meet. So that is what brand relevance is all about, con uh, constantly improving your services so as you can stay relevant to your target audience. So these are the pillars of branding that all successful brands go through in order to stay unique and stand out in a crowded market space. So let's take them. The first pillar, as I, I, I already said, is called the brand clarity. It's about knowing who you are. Before any successful brand begins to build their brand, they first of all validate their business model to ensure that the business model is viable enough and worth building a brand for. Because branding is a, it's an investment. It's going to take effort and time and money to build a successful brand. So before you invest the time and effort into building that brand, you, you first of all have to make sure that the business model is solid because you can't have a brand without a business. That is why, first of all, uh, before we began the, today's webinar, I asked how many of us have their own businesses and a couple of people said they have their businesses. But when I asked how many of us do believe they have their brand, uh, some didn't say yes, even though they do have a business. Because as I said, most of us don't know the meaning of a brand. Actually, everyone has got a brand, whether you, know, you have a business or not, you have a brand because based on our definition, a brand is just a perception. So how people perceive you, we've all got that perception. So you get it. So building a brand, you need to make sure that the business that you're going to build a brand for, your brand is just like the soul of that business. So you can have a wonderful brand, but if the business model is not viable, then it will be just a waste of time. Just like the Instagram model, who, who built the following of over 2 million people, but yet when she launched a business of a clothing line, she couldn't even sell 36 T-shirts to, to her to over, over 2 million followers. Okay, so first of all, all these brands, they make sure that their business model is viable. They validate the business model. After they've validated their business model, they build a strong brand core. Your brand core is the foundation or the compass of your brand. That is where everything about your brand begins. You, you get deep into it later on. And after they've built their brand core, they, they identify their brand persona. Brands, as I said, is the soul of your business. So the brand persona is you humanifying your business, it's you trying to make your businesses more human, more humane. So you add personality to your, to your business, you add personality to it. That is where you name, you, you strategically name your business, you, you choose your tagline, you decide on the brand architecture that you like to go with. Are you trying to build a house of brands or branded houses or a mixture of both? Then you, you check your tone of voice. How do you want to communicate to your audience so as they can perceive you in the way that you want them to perceive you? Then you talk about your story. That is when you talk about your brand story. What is your origin story? What, what is your user story? And finally, they do a brand assessment. That is the brand SWOT analysis. Before they get into the brand positioning, you're supposed to know your strength, weakness, your threats, and your opportunities before you even look at your competitors, so as you don't copy your competitors blindly. So you do a brand assessment, that is what we call a brand SWOT analysis, before you look at your competition. So that is what we have for brand clarity. That is the first pillar, and that is the first step of branding. You're supposed to go through the brand clarity before, uh, when building your brand. After you are done with your brand clarity, you go to the next pillar, that is, uh, okay, so let's look at the brand core. As I said, the brand core is the foundation of your brand, which starts with your why, you know, your purpose. Why do you exist beyond making money? That should be the starting point of your brand core. After you've identified your purpose, why you exist beyond making money, then you have to have a vision. A vision is just your where. Where do you want to be in 10, 20, 50 years time? Where do you, where do you see yourself? That is the future you want to get to. That is the vision of your brand. After you envision the future you want to be, without having a plan to get to that future, it just becomes a dream. So you need a roadmap which can get you to your vision. That is what we call the mission statement. So the mission is the why, is the roadmap to the vision that you have that you would like to get to. Then after that, you look at your goals. 
your goals are set, uh, your vision, as I said, is it's like your vision is supposed to be audacious, it's big. You wouldn't get your vision. If you get your vision, there wouldn't be a need for your brand anymore. But uh, how do you know that you are on the right path? How do you know that you are becoming successful? That is how come you need smaller visions. That is what we call goals. So they are smaller visions that you can achieve. They are attainable things that you can achieve in your brand. And your, uh, your goal, goals are supposed to be smart goals. They are supposed to be specific. They are supposed to be measurable. They are supposed to be attainable. They are supposed to be time. Uh, uh, they are supposed to be relevant, and they are so. Uh, they are supposed to be timely also. So that is the goals. That is the goals. And now that you have your goals, so for example, if you're a bakery brand, you have a vision to become the best bakery in China, but you, you can't get there now because now that you are now starting out. But you need some goals that can let you know that you are on the right path towards your vision. So the goals can be, okay, I can be the, the best bakery in my city, Wuhan, before, okay, then later on, I can be the best bakery in my province, Hubei, before I get to the whole of China. So that these are your goals. These are attainable things that you can achieve in your, uh, in your business or brand. But uh, having the goal is not, is not over. You also need values. Values is your culture, like what you stand for, what you believe in. Yes, you might have a goal of being the best bakery, in Wuhan or uh, in Wuhan or Hubei, but you need to stand for something. If not, you might achieve your goals in the wrong way. So you need values. That is your culture. What you stand for. So okay, maybe I want to be the best bakery in Wuhan or in Hubei, but uh, one of my values is to provide healthy pastries to people. So with that being one of my values, I'll make sure that I wouldn't push out a lot of pastries just to become the best or just to be known in the whole of Wuhan, just to be the best bakery in Wuhan. But rather, I have values that I stand by of providing healthy uh, pastries to people. So the values is supposed to guide your goals so as you don't achieve your goals in the wrong way. And finally, we have your promise. Your promise is basically what the state, uh, what you promised your, uh, your target audience. So for example, with the, with the example of the bakery, you can have a promise that, okay, when they deal with AB bakery, we provide healthy pastries. So that is anybody who interacts with your brand is supposed to know about this promise that whenever they interact with your brand, this is what they are getting from you. This is what they should expect from you. So this is what we call the brand core. It starts with your purpose, your vision, your mission, your goals, your values, and your promise. Now let's get to the positioning. Positioning, uh, positioning is all about owning a space in the minds of your target audience, whereby whenever they need solutions to their problems, your brand is what comes up first in their mind. For example, if you are living in China, whenever you want to get cheap stuff from China, what comes into your mind? Taobao. So Taobao owns a position in your mind. So that is what we call positioning. And positioning starts with target audience. Whenever uh, we deal with clients, I ask them, uh, who are your target audience? And they tell me, oh, everybody, anybody who can buy my product is my target audience. But you can't, serve, you can't serve everybody in the world. You need to have a specific group of people that you are targeting, that we call target audience, because you can't serve everybody. You can't be everything to everybody out there. You need to have a niche. You need to niche down and have a specific group of people that can benefit most from your services or your product. So you look at your target audience. Then after looking at your target audience, after identifying the people who can benefit the most from your business or your your brand then you look at your you do your competitive analysis whereby you look at the people who are competing with you for the attention from your target audience so that is where you do you do the competitive analysis just to find out okay who are my competitors who are my top three competitors to know who you are up against just to not just to kick them out but just to 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 find out uh, to find some gaps in the industry, what they are not doing well that you can provide to the target audience so as they can always choose you over your competitors. So after you identify your, your target audience and you run in a competitive analysis, then remember we did uh, the self-analysis, that is a brand SWOT analysis. So we do know our strength, we do know our weakness, we do know our stretch, we do know our, uh, our opportunities. So after we run, uh, we, uh, we identify our target audience and uh, identify our competitors. Now we can come up with our differentiator. What makes us different from these people? 
Okay, so what makes us different from these people? So that is our differentiator. So after you identify your differentiator, then you can come out with your positioning statement, your USP. USP is simply your unique selling proposition. What makes you unique? Your value proposition, what value do you bring to your target audience? Your only net statement, what, what do you offer that you are the only person who offers that service? That is your only statement. And uh, the elevator page, your manifesto, anything that can position you in the minds of your target audience. That is what we call brand positioning. And now the third pillar of branding, the famous pillar of branding, which I believe most of us are familiar with. It has to do with your identity design, which has your logo design, your typography, the, the color palette, the stationary design, the packaging, then the style guidance, and so on. Normally, most businesses start from this pillar, that is the third pillar, brand expression, leaving the uh, brand clarity, positioning, they just jump straight to expression. So expression is just, now that you've identified who you are, you've identified, you've positioned yourself in the market space, now you can express your brand in a way that people can perceive you in the way that you want them to perceive you. So that is where we do your core messaging, we do your marketing strategy, because uh, when it comes to marketing, people, when they start up, uh, when they start businesses, they, they just they just add on to their noise. They just post their uh, they post their business uh, or services in all these groups that are without identifying that whether even the people in the group are their target audience. It happens a lot in China. That is how come you find people selling maybe uh, sneakers and they are posting their sneakers in maybe electronic WeChat group. What shows that your target audience are in that group? because you've not done your clarity, your positioning, so you don't know who you are serving, you're just adding on to the noise, and you can never get customers from such a group, because you lack focus, you lack clarity, you lack positioning. So that is the third pillar of branding. And finally, brand relevance, whereby you have to constantly improve on your product to stay relevant to your target audience. So it, it, it has got to do with your team building, your customer experience, as I said, you need to find out what was the experience like when they dealt with your brand? So as you try to improve the experience for the next customer, and uh, branding is something that you, you don't do and forget about it. it. It evolves. Your brand is supposed to evolve with your business. So you must constantly update your brand to make sure that you stay relevant to your target audience. The number one rule of branding is that don't, don't communicate unless you know who you are, why you matter, before you start communicating. So that is the number one rule of branding. So you need to know who you are, that is clarity, know who you are, do your positioning before you start communicating through your brand expression. Then after communicating and uh, standing out in a crowded marketplace, that is not the end because some, someone else is also working on their brand and they might overtake you. So you need to what? So work on the third pillar, that is of brand relevance, whereby you constantly improve on your brand to stay relevant and provide value to your target audience. Okay, so now that we've learned all these four pillars of branding, what are we supposed to do next? Okay, our plan of action for today is what? We are supposed to audit our brand through the four pillars of branding to identify which, part, uh, which of the pillars that needs improvement in our brand. And we start from there and work on our brand. If you want to read more about branding or how to build successful brands, I recommend these three books, How to Launch a Brand from uh, Fabian Gaywater, uh, Brand Intervention from David Brea, and uh, Brand Zach from Mari Numa. So before we end, let's do a quick summary. Today we've identified that branding is the way of, it's the way whereby we can differentiate our businesses in the crowded marketplace. And how do we go about it? We go about it through the four pillars of branding, that is, brand clarity, brand positioning, brand expression, and brand relevancy. Okay, so thank you. Now uh, we have the q and I, I intentionally uh, went through this so as we, uh, because not all businesses are the same. So I believe you do have specific questions pertaining to your specific business. So we can answer these questions. Thank you. Okay, so now the Q uh, and A. So if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Maybe if you have a question, you can, if you know how to raise your hand, um, you could raise your hand. If, and know, if you know how to do that on Zoom, but otherwise maybe put it in the, in the block or just unmute and ask the question maybe. 
the code. There's a question from Da. Okay, can you please read the question? Uh, what is the question? Can you, so it says while you're okay, in Q&A. Okay, the slides on the book. Okay. Yeah, these are the books. How to launch a brand by Fabian Gewoda and uh, Brand Intervention by David Brand. And the last one is Brand Zach. Any book from Mari Numa, he's, he's one of the heroes in branding. So you can never go wrong with any of his books. Okay. Um, okay, I have a question actually. Yeah, I have a oh, okay. okay. Uh, Let's you can get these books on Taobao or Amazon. Yeah. All right, Bianca has a question. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, Bianca, you can unmute and then ask your question. I can't find you on the screen here. Okay, um, so, oops, what happened? Okay, so I, I was a bit late, but I just wanna uh, ask a question concerning the last part where he says before uh, you he says before you uh, talk to your maybe target market that you need to have a few things like a team and you need to know who you are um, is it necessary to always have a team uh, to express the relevancy of your brand okay no uh, actually that is not what I said Okay, what I said was, before you start marketing, you need to know who you are, who you sell. With the part that you're talking about team building, that is relevancy, brand relevancy. That is, in order to stay relevant, continuously to stay relevant to your target audience, you need to build your team, go to your customer experience, and always do a brand audit to know where you're falling short, then you can improve upon it. So there are two different things. Okay, so just the part where you said... Uh, you said then you still mentioned that you need to have a team. What if I am the brand and I don't have a team? So do I have to have a team before I talk to my target no. market? No, 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 no. You, you, okay, as I said, this is the fourth pillar of branding. That is the after you've done everything, in order to stay continuously stay relevant to your target audience, that is when if you've got a team, then you, you need to make sure that whatever changes or whatever involvement that comes with your brand, your team is are supposed to be aware of it. So that is when, so as they can communicate the value that your brand stands for to your target audience. So if you've got a team, then obviously you need to build a team to be on the same page as you are. Then you also have to go to your customer experience to, to be able to improve, continuously improve the experience of uh, the experience your target audience gets whenever they interact with your brand. And obviously you always have to run an audit to find out where, need, where which of the pillars need improvement, then you can work on it. Is that clear? Yes, it is, thank you. Oh, okay, thanks. All right, I, I have a question really, um, and it speaks to what I said earlier about like rebranding. Um, okay. And, and you said now like your brand evolves with you, right? But I guess my question is, how do you, what is the best way to kind of re or evolve your brand? Is, is, wait, is, is um, rebranding always necessary when your brand is evolving? And what is the, is, yeah, so I think that's the, the first question. And then from that, there'd be like a second question on the, on the how to in terms of rebranding. Okay. In terms of rebranding, you need to know the purpose for the rebranding. So again, you only rebrand when your brand is not serving the purpose it's supposed to serve. So for example, maybe your target audience were maybe students and now your, your brand, like it has evolved and now maybe you're targeting different set of people, then you can do a brand, re, uh, you can do a rebrand or even a refresh. A refresh is just like you doing, updating maybe your logo to stay relevant, maybe these days, uh, I think beginning of this year, a lot of these big brands are now refreshing their logos, changing their logos to fit the kind of uh, the kind of society we have now. Because maybe when they started their brand, their logos that they made maybe wasn't versatile enough. And now the, the, the platforms that they apply their logo to, they've changed now. Now you, your logo, you, you're supposed to have it. Maybe if 
Now you can build apps, so you're supposed to have an app for it. You can have a lot of platforms for it. So now they can do a refresh. So always have to, you always have to audit to know the purpose for the rebrand. So a rebrand, a rebrand is not a must. It's supposed to have a purpose for. You're supposed to have a purpose before you do a rebrand. When you realize that your brand is not serving its purpose, then obviously you need to work on it and do a rebrand. Is, is, yeah. is your question answered? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So refresh as opposed to always rebranding. Because if it's not broken, why then bother fixing it? If it's working, then there, there shouldn't be a need for you to rebrand. Because remember, your, your brand, as I said, your brand, uh, your, even though you are building your brand, it's, it, your brand is not what you say it is, it's what your audience say it is. So at times, some companies do rebrands that doesn't go well because your, your, your brand is being controlled by your target audience. So you might do a rebrand and your, some companies have done a rebrand whereby they have to reverse the rebrand back to the old brand because the target audience says they don't like it. And the brand is for them, not for you. They are buying your product. They are using your product. So if they are not happy with the new logo and they decide not to purchase your product, then there wouldn't be a need for your brand anymore. have two questions thanks so much we have two questions afia we'll start with afia, afia. okay hey, um, yes yes we can hear you okay so my question is about the tagline it's something i've struggled with for a long time i know it, it's 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 a phrase that is supposed to stay in the minds of your your followers or your 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 customers but how your do you come audience. up with a good one like, is the tagline a summary of your mission and vision all in one? Or is it something just catchy? Like, what is its relevance? And how do you come up with a good one? Okay. Your tagline is supposed to serve a purpose. For example, if there are various types of taglines, for example, if your brand name is not obvious, like, for example, your brand name is maybe Ethia, we don't know what you do to get it. So we search a brand name, you can use your, a, a, a tagline to differentiate your brand from others. So maybe a fear with a tagline, maybe we sell hair. Do you get it? So as people can know what you do. So your, your tagline can tell your audience what you do if your brand name is not that clear. Okay, so what, what if your brand name is clear? Like maybe you sell, you sell uh, hair, hair and your, your brand name is a fear hair. Then your tagline is supposed to be your differentiator. What makes you different from your target audience? So when they see your tagline, so maybe maybe we we sell quality hair or like something that is unique to you, something that differentiates you from your competitors. Is, is your question answered? Yes, yeah, answered. Thank you. Awesome. Next yeah. one we have Pedrito has a question, and then and then and then Bishop and goes. Sorry, my my question has to do with um. If, if you are a small business or uh, like a very small business, less than five people, or you're a solopreneur, what's the relationship between your corporate brand and your personal brand? And is there, is there uh, a time where the two, where the two intersect and um, how does one affect the other? Like the latter question. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I understood your question correctly, what's the difference between a personal brand and a corporate brand? Is that a question? Yeah, that's that's the okay, basic great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the that's the uh, basic question. I think so I think the, the bigger question is uh if you're a small business, where do they intersect and how does one affect the other? If you're a small business, where do they intersect? Like your personal brand and your your corporate brand. Yes, sir. Where do where do these brands intersect, right? Is that a question? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great. It depends, it depends on what you do. For example, if you're a small business and maybe you offer consultation, probably your, your corporate brand is also your personal brand because you are the face of your, your, your business. So you can't say A for your corporate and come and say B on your personal brand unless it's, it's, it's a business whereby you are not the face of the business. And even these days, all these corporations, they, they know that there's a saying that people buy from people they know and trust. So these days, all, all these corporations are also in, integrating personal brands into their branding system, whereby the CEOs are now known 
all these successful brands, they make sure that now their CEOs are also building brands so that people can relate to them because it's, it's supposed to be a human to human interaction. You get it. So now, all even all the corporate brands do have personal brands, like the personalities in the, in the, in the corporation, they've got their own brands. As we said, everybody has got a brand, but it's up to you to tell your story because if you don't tell your story, then someone will tell the story for you. So all these corporations, the leaders in the corporations are telling their own story. That just like Elon Musk, we, he has a strong personal brand and he has his corporate, uh, corporate brand like the Tesla and other stuff. But they, they, they work together now. You get it. Is, is your question answered? Uh, yeah, pretty much it's, it's answered. Thank you. Okay, okay. next oh. we have Nda. And if I'm saying that right. Am I clear? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. All right, great. So thanks a lot. I think it's really, it's been really informative on sort of um, approaching on the approach to branding. I just wanted to to ask you a question about sort of the the mechanics or the process. What are some of the most like effective ways that you think an organization can um, can uh, express its brand? You know, because I think for me, I'm kind of new to the to to branding. To thinking of it as outside of just having a logo or something like that so like are there any tools um, maybe social media platforms or something like that that you think that are important for a company in this day and age to sort of use um to express its brand to express it's... their brand okay yeah. great as that is the third pillar of branding that we, we learned about that is you can use your logo you can use your colors you can use your stationary design you can use your packaging you can use your website, your social media, your messaging. For example, the, the, the quick quiz uh, game that we played, which, when we changed our questions, the, the answers changed. So based on the words, we were able to influence people's perception on their, uh, to, to make different decisions. You get it? So when it comes to brand expression, it, it, it deals with the, uh, the visual and verbal aspect of your brand. That is your logo, your color palette. So you can use some colors that resonate with your target audience. So for example, if you are in the industry of maybe health, that is how come when you're in the industry of maybe banking and finance, you normally use blue because all these elements are supposed to speak to the people you are targeting because that is what they are supposed to expect. When you're in the health industry, they, they expect you to use maybe color like the blue color. And all these colors have meaning, you get it. So these are the ways that you can express your brand to your target audience, through your colors, through your, through your logo, through your website, through your messaging and your marketing. Is your question answered? I think I'll just ask you more specifically about like any tools or any like uh, platforms that you think are particularly uh, powerful. Like, I understand you have a logo. Let's say you have your logo, you have your color palettes, you have what you want to say. I'm just saying, like, do you think, for example, um, would Twitter be more... Um, oh, um, okay, okay. You're talking about the marketing aspect of it. Where, where do I think the best platform to market, like, express your brand? Is that a question? Yeah, or, or just some okay. that you think are, are, are powerful for, for organizations. Okay. Well, well, unfortunately, there isn't a specific answer to that question. The reason being that every business is different and your target audience are different. When it comes to marketing, I believe that it's all about crafting the right message for the right people on the right platform. So it's all about your audience and where they are, then you reach to them at, uh, at where they are. So if you're a business and you do with maybe CEOs, your best platform should be LinkedIn, not Instagram. Do you get it? Yeah, so it depends on the people you are targeting, where they are, to determine the platform you choose. And when it comes to marketing, uh, you, you are supposed to apply the 80-20 rule. You have to choose one platform and you invest 80% of your time and effort into that platform. And the remaining 20%, you apply it to other platforms. Because these days, people assume you are supposed to be on all platforms. For example, with my brand, I'm more active on LinkedIn. So I spend 80% of my time and effort on LinkedIn and spend the 20% on Facebook, and WeChat, and Instagram because of the people, because of what I want from the social media, the purpose of it. 
So it's all about crafting the right message for the right people on the right platform. So I, there isn't any right or wrong answer. You have to identify your, your target audience, where they are, and you meet them there. Is your question answered now? Yeah. Okay. So we're about to close, but we have one more question. So we'll take the last question for today, and maybe then we can continue the question for the next. Um, but for now, we have one more question from Isabel. Uh, yes, um, maybe a bit tricky question, um, because yes, you've been interacting with us uh, this last month, and I wanted to know, uh, what do you think about Teranga Valley branding? And what would be some advice? <laughs> we know there is a lot of work to do. And with Kizito and Kito, we actually have a meeting on Sunday. So yeah, it would be very useful to have some directions because as you know, uh, we started this from the heart, from the heart. So we didn't really have a target. We just had a purpose that we wanted people to meet. We wanted to learn from each other. But we are now evolving and uh, we want to make it uh, more structured so it can also benefit more people. And actually our target is of course people in Shanghai, but also beyond. So that's why it's making it a bit difficult for branding because we need to be yes in China, but also outside of China to have the more impact. So thank you for your entry. I know it's not easy, just briefly some advice. Okay. Okay, I think that is where we start with the plan of action. We, uh, we will have to audit the Taranga Valley brand to get it. We have to run the brand through the four pillars before we can identify where you need help with. Because we can't prescribe, I can't tell you do this or that without knowing where you really need help. So we have to do an audit on the brand through the four pillars, then identify where you need help. Is it clarity? Don't, if you don't have clarity, then we have to start from clarity. If you've got clarity but you lack positioning, maybe you are posting at the right uh, at the wrong places, then we have to work on your positioning. Or if your uh, your your expression is not consistent, it's all over the place, then we have to work on the brand expression to make sure that your your uh, visuals are consistent. You know, all your colors and or everything about the visual elements of your brand is consistent. Or is it relevancy? People, are you uh, keep are you keeping on providing value to people? Then we have to work on. The relevance. So we have to do the audits and know where we have to start from. So that is the plan of action for today. Everyone here has to go through the audits themselves. It's free. You can just based on what. I, by the way, I'll share the uh, the deck into the uh, to the WeChat group so as you can have a copy of it so you can read through it and go and apply it to your brand. I think. Uh, Thank uh, you. Thanks so much. I That's. Think is someone's hand up? That's our homework yes. at Taranga Valley. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't see who has their hand raised, but I'm about to close. We're almost at an hour. Yeah, or the minute. Um, so first of all, thank you so much. Um, I think so. What, what really stood out, and I'm actually going to read this because I, when, when you said it, I was like, epiphany. Um, you say the brand has to say who you are and why you matter. Um, I think that's my absolute key takeaway. Well, amongst anything, amongst um, other things today. So thank you so much for um, taking the time to share um, your skills with us here at the Vedli. Um, and then if anyone wants to maybe ask more questions or, or anything, they can then obviously link up with you in the group. Um, but thank you so much. And it's been a very insightful evening. So, so happy to be working together. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Um, and that's me and on behalf of the Taranga Valley team. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining today. And uh, yes, as we said, we will record, we are recording this event and uh, we have a few more coming on next, uh, next month. Uh, let us know uh, if you have any uh, question, feedback, and we might also go further after we do our homework with Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Don't be shy. If you have any, any question and uh, you want to have a little debate on the group and uh, that we could, um, because I think everyone here is an entrepreneur. Everyone 
has its brand and we started from where we are and we didn't maybe even know correctly what were our target market and now that we are moving forward uh, we start to see it so we can move to the branding section because it's not so easy also to go from an idea to a brand um, but we are we are moving towards it and it was very very interesting uh, to, to see that you need homework there is no magical answer of how to brand yourself you know you need to know yourself better first um, thank you Kwame thank you for your time and uh, we keep it uh, open and please guys do do a little bit of homework and maybe we can also uh, maybe with Kwame um, maybe uh, in other events going further once everyone has done the basics and thank you thank you Kwame Thank you, and thank okay. you everybody for coming out. I think someone is asking for my QR code. If you are in the group, I'm, I'm in the group, so I'll, I'll send a slide into the group. Uh, that is easy. Uh, show okay. the slide to me. Okay. Okay, let me awesome. Thanks, everyone, for coming out, and we'll talk in the group. If you're not in the group, um, speak to myself or Isabel or Kizito, and we can add you in the group and the main Taranga Valley group as well. And we'll see you next time. We'll have two more events coming up soon, so we'll see you next time.